can watch me when I fall, when I cry, when I get shot, when I go to jail, when I die, you can watch me. What was your relationship like with Tupac? It was, okay, so in the beginning when I first met Tupac, I met Tupac at, it was a club called The Underground. And I think he had just done Juice. And I was with Nikki D. And he was sitting, he was sitting somewhere. So I was like, any chance I got to let somebody know I could rap, I was like trying to do. So I was like, I went up to him, I said something, something. And I said, yeah. I bet I can rap better than you. And I just wanted him to like bite, like, yeah, let me hear you. You know, just I just wanted to be heard. So um yeah. he ain't bite. And uh he said, Yeah. And um that was that. I didn't see him no more. I don't even know what was said after that. Uh, something was said, but I don't know what it what it was. He didn't say nothing like, Bitch, please, or nothing like that. You know, it wasn't nothing like that. It was, yeah. Hmm, something like that. And so then I met him again and I think it was Jack the Rapper. And okay. he was performing and I think he got into some type of tussle. It seemed like when I saw him and he was getting into a lot of tussles. I saw him at the uh Glam Slam. Is that, is that Prince's Club? Was that the yep. Yeah, it's funny because our studio is right around the corner from Glam Slam. Right now I'm sitting right around the corner from Glam, uh, Glam Slam. Yeah, and he was going in there one day, and I think they didn't let everybody go in, and they just bum-rushed it, and I, I was like, damn, Tupac, crazy. So then we had the Above the Rim, uh, I think it was the Above the Rim premiere, and he came to the party, and um, then we had more of a conversation. I was like, hey, Ray, da -da -da -da, you dope, and this and that, and that and this, and then um, we, so I said, yeah, you too, and so he... Uh, and it's a picture that we took, and he has his arm around me, and he's looking at me smiling. I don't know what was on his mind, but he's just looking at me smiling. So then everything was cool. When he came to death row, everything was still cool. When he got out, I used to, um, I, I had a thing for uh, watermelon blow, plop, blow pops, and I would always have a blow pop. And he was like, Rage, he says something about you. He said, I don't like big girls, but it's something about you. I said, yeah. You know, like, you, you just stop. You just flirting and all of this stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. so then one day he comes in and he tells me, because this is after the Source Awards, he tells me, um, he says, uh, yeah, Rage, you the weak link on death row. I said, yeah. Why you say that? And he said, because you, so at the Source Awards, when Junior Mafia and when Suge said what he said, everybody from Death Row stood up. I didn't stand up. So one of the guys was like, you ain't going to stand up for the homie? And I was like, why? I don't like what he said, and I'm not a follower. And so then when Junior Mafia and them came out, and me and Little Kim were cool. So And I liked the song. So I'm standing up for her in support. Mm. Like, you know, hey, you know. Then I could feel the daggers in my back, like if you gonna sit your ass down. So I was the only one from death row standing up at the time. So he was like, he said, for that reason, I, he felt I was the weak link. I said, yeah, well, I think that makes me the strong link because I'm not a follower. So then it was some issues where he um he wanted me to diss Little Kim and Foxy Brown and. I wasn't, me and, like I said, me and Kim was cool, so I wasn't trying to do all of that. And I said, you know, why don't you, if you got a problem with them, why don't you see, why don't you see them personally? He's like, I don't want to kill the motherfucker Rage. I want to destroy his career. Like, he, he didn't want to do any bodily harm. Like, I don't, I don't want to kill him. I just want to destroy his career. Something like, I guess, 50 Cent did to Ja Rule. You know, something like that. I would, I guess... Would you say 50 Cent killed Ja Rule's career? Uh, kind of, sort of. I mean, de <laughs> definitely, de definitely took the steam out. He, he was definitely yeah. at a height. And it, def it definitely, I don't know if it fully killed it, but he definitely put a, put a stifling on it. Yeah, yeah. I agree. So I, I compared it to something like that. And then, um, you know, we butted heads about that. And then after so many times, um, finally he was on. Uh, I was in the studio one time and he came in there 
And I was just like, why are you always coming into my session? Like, like I would have to leave once he got there. Like, why are you always coming into my session? And he was like, don't see me, babe. See them niggas in the front. And besides, your album should have been done. And he ain't lie. My album should have been done. But like yeah. I said, I'm in here by myself. You know, and ain't nobody helping me. Ain't nobody in here with me. I'm in here by myself. So I went to the front, and I was like, why is Pac always coming into my sessions? And they was like, shh, come here, Rage. Well, what it is, is nobody want to tell Pac no. I was like, hmm. Hmm. So I went back and told him. And he was like, you know what, Rage? Whenever, you know, if I come in and you're not finished, if you need some help, you know, holler at me. I'll help you. I'll do this. And then it was another time he found out that I hit a cop. And he's like, Rage, I, saw, I know. He said, you hit a cop? I said, yeah. He said, I know some niggas that won't hit a cop. And then he just started his, he didn't try to get me to do something I didn't want to do anymore. It was, I think it became a thing where, all right, you, you, and I'm me, and I'm going to accept you for you, and you accept me for me, and we'll be cool. And I think that's how it ended. Um, he wanted me to be on his I always get the name mixed up. I don't know if it's One Nation or A Nation of Millions. He wanted me to be on that album. He said, you going to be on my album, Rage? I said, uh. He said, I got some East Coast niggas on there, Rage. I got some East Coast niggas on there. And the first name he called was Buckshot Shorty. And uh, that's the only name I remembered, Buckshot Shorty, because he's one of my favorites anyway. And so um, I said, right, I'll think about it. I'll think about it. And we never got to that point because we all know what happened. Were you supposed to be on his song "My Made Up," the song that the, the, the song with uh, Red and Meth? Were you supposed were, were you supposed to be on that song with Inspector well, Deck? You know, I was I was on that, and I think it was um, dang, not Ghostface, Inspector uh, Deck, Inspector Deck, yeah, yes. So we were uh, at Daz's house when we did that, and I don't know. I saw an interview. Daz said Rage didn't want to be on the song because it was too many guys on there. Yeah, I, yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, why would you say some shit like that? That ain't that ain't why I wasn't on the song. I wasn't on the song because y'all took me off the song. So everything I've done, that don't even make sense. Everything I've done has been with guys. Yeah. So why would I not want to be? That's what I'm comfortable with. Guys, like, because I'm trying to prove a point here. So I said, he said, I don't know what I was thinking, Rage. But um, so, yeah, I, it was taken off and... And I don't know why Inspector Deck was taking off, but I, I think it became pop. I don't mean was Meth and Red still on there? There's a version of of of, of a version that Red the Man is on it. Yeah. So I know um, Pop was definitely on it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you haven't done too many songs with Tupac. I mean, um, he was on the hook of a uh, Big Bad Lady. Do you have any other songs with Tupac? Well, I had this one song. I... I think it was called The Struggle Continues. And we were working on that. And I don't know what happened to it. I had the beat. And I talked to a friend of mine a couple of months ago. And he said, whatever happened to that song? I said, you remember that song? He said, yeah, you had the verse and everything. And um, I don't know. I don't think I ever laid the verse. But it was definitely talking about, you know, the struggle, uh, the plight of African people in America and oppression and things like that. So... Um, I think once we had got over what we were on at first bumping heads, I think it would have that's the route we would have went. That would have been our topic of discussion whenever we did a song. 